Hello everyone, this is Combat PT. Today is going to be a video, and simply the reason it's going to be a video is because what happened on Saturday's stream of trying to live stream Heliborn on the PC. You see, as I had taken 45 minutes to set the entire thing up and started the stream, well, it turns out Heliborn has a little bit of a bug, which turns out if you're trying to stream the game, well, only people will see a loading screen with your mouse moving around. And yes, while the person streaming will be able to play the game perfectly fine, your viewers won't see a doggone thing. So I think I have a clip here. I'm going to show you what it looked like. Afghan war and both are different time periods. Now, this is about warfare dealing with helicopters. So as you can see with the tech tree, you have the Americans and the Russians. There are. So that was fun, wasn't it? I mean, that's like watching a PowerPoint presentation just with no graphics or charts or pie charts or coffee. And after spending an entire day trying to figure out exactly what it was, going through forum posts, and then finally talking to the developer, did I finally find out what the problem was? It's a bug. A bug which they never fixed. <sighs> Here we go, once again. This is Heliborn. And this game will cost you about $19.99 on Steam. It does have an offline mode, which is kind of nice to have, considering the amount of money it costs for you a multiplayer game. And, you know, you don't know what's going to happen to it in the future. At least you have the offline mode as an option. It should be mentioned also that you have the wonderful ability to hook up your PS4 and Xbox One controller pretty much with ease. And considering this is a PC game, you'll also be able to play with your keyboard and mouse. So when you log in here, you'll actually have uh, one squadron of Russian helicopters, Generation 1. And then you will also have the Generation 1 American helicopters, these here will have served in World War II, about the end of World War II, to Vietnam. Now, you will eventually be able to get more different helicopters for both factions, and uh, you'll be able to include them into your hangar, uh, into your squadrons itself. How you do that is basically through missions, where you collect these stars here, which is your experience. You put that through the progression, you'll be able to research more helicopters, and uh, that's how this works. It's pretty much the same you've dealt with before many times. So you have the random battles, which you can create your own random battles there and make them on your own. Invite your friends. You can play them offline or online. You have historical uh, operations, which take place on different maps in different time periods for the Americans in, in Vietnam in 1972. It is going to be with, uh, of course, it's going to be these helicopters here. It is going to be defensive, so you can be dropping supplies and defending bases during the Vietnam War. Quite a challenge, but fun to play with. If you want to go with Afghanistan, it's 1987 to 1988. It's the Afghan War with the Russians. It is offensive, and these are the helicopters you're going to be using. You're going to be using that against, uh, basically, uprisings and so forth, trying to deal with trying to control everything during that war. You can see how difficult it is. Now, the bread and butter of this game is actually the PvP and co-op. Now, the co-op I highly recommend for people who just started because that way you'll understand how the game operates without being harassed by other players. You get a chance to feel how it is to land, supply bases, defend bases, and get a chance to play with your vehicles. PvP, on the other hand, is quite, in uh, quite enjoyable. It goes through different time periods, from the Vietnam War all the way up to Afghanistan, to Kosovo. And there's a lot of modern conflicts that happen up different maps uh, as you move up. Now, for the progression, you're, sadly, there's only two factions, which is the United States and the Soviet Union. Now, the Soviets have less helicopters, and that's because, in reality, they actually held on to their helicopters more than the Americans. They held on to them longer without more development. Now, that does not mean that the Soviets are lacking. A lot of the helicopters that they have in their control there, a lot of them that have been used, were actually retrofitted, and this game does that perfectly well. Now, for the Americans, you know, you're going to be simply spoiled for choice. But the reality is both are going to be matched pretty well. I highly recommend, though, that if you are playing this game, to go and invest into researching both sides, the Americans and the Soviets, from, you know, from their different generations, so you're not blocked out from one server or another, and you're able to play all of them at any given point. Each and every one of these helicopters actually existed at some point in time. And because of that, they also included the fact of mass and weight. So there's physics playing in every single match. When you pick up a helicopter, depending on its size and weight, depends on how it maneuvers and responds. And uh, you may see that in the match I'm about to play. When you first start, you're going to be selecting out of the helicopters that you have in your hangar, uh, the squadron you picked. Now, each match is about over, it's about an hour. So, yeah, I'm going to be actually not filming the entire thing. I won't be recording the entire thing, but I will 
uh, show you what it's all about. Now, first thing is, is I'm picking a Huey right now. I'm going to be coming over to this base number uh, four here. It's at 50%. I'm going to land down and to drop off a group of soldiers actually to defend it. Now, when I do this, hang on, land, 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 land. There we go. They'll automatically hop out and then they'll immediately go to the defensive turrets. Either they'll be for land or for AA. In this case, with AA turrets, they're going to be defending against any aircraft that comes by. So they are devastating and it is not easy for any helicopter to deal with. You can try and go around them or go underneath the fire rate, depending on how high they are. You can try and land with soldiers on board and that leads to some interesting instances. So I'm going to turn back and I'm going to head back to... Uh, get enough, uh, again, another squad of soldiers again so I can put them onto that third base over there. We need to get that. If you look over to the far left, you'll see that I have 500 shells, I have 48 rockets, and I have gunners. Now, this can be selected multiple different ways. So the gunners themselves, you can select them and command them yourself uh, to fire or leave them auto. Uh, landed. Oh, the soldiers aren't coming in. Okay, so I guess they don't want to walk over here so i'll just you know waste fuel and land over here so also as i'm here you can also switch i could switch over helicopters by hitting the g key i can change to whatever one i have i can switch back to either three of the helicopters i have um, if they are damaged and get crashed they do have a short repair time but nothing too big you can bring them back in so now i've got a full basically uh unit with me right now so i'm going to take them to the base uh, over at uh, three flying over water actually kind of is detrimental to the helicopter because especially if you get to lower altitudes um, it's going to be hard to get back up because they need a lot of lift and air or well water itself doesn't provide that as much it's okay we're going to land right here i'm going to drop some soldiers down perfect and here comes the enemy, of course. So now, I don't have any heat-seeking rockets on me, but here you go. No. Wait, is that a Russian yak? Yeah, it is. It's a Russian banana. It's a Russian transport. Oh, yeah. Yeah, well, I wonder who's going to be the target. Come here. Come on. Yeah, I didn't need that. I, I didn't need that. That was close. That was close. I don't need to be hit by another helicopter going down. Okay, so we lost everybody that I put down at the base. And, uh, okay, so I'm going to take a look really quick. Looks like my ally is actually going to be landing down. So he's going to take over the base. That's good. I'll just give him some air cover. Make sure nobody's trying to get and attack him. Oh, look at that. I'm actually quite damaged. Yeah, the armor's up, but... Uh, yeah, the engine's got some issues. Okay, well, no wonder this acting's kind of strange. The more damage you take, the harder it is to steer your helicopter. Come on. Rockets, come on, come on, come on, come on. Turn, 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 turn. And there goes our AA guns from our base. Nice. And there's on me. Ow, ooh, ooh, ow, ow, ow. Okay, now I need to get out of here. Jeez. Yeah, that hurt. Of course, it had to be one of those little Russian helicopters. <sighs> well, gives me a chance to go with the transport helicopter and let you see what this is about. Now, both factions have their own transport helicopters, and this is the uh, American, uh, basically, Generation 1 transport helicopter, which it looks like a giant green banana, probably even more so than the Russian one. It has 500, uh, 500 shells for its guns, which is not bad. It does have 24 rockets, which is even better. And it does have, again, its own protection with uh, guards, or should I say soldiers leaning out with machine guns, focusing on the left and right. I'm carrying about 18 soldiers on here. So with one of these, uh, I can actually take more than one base. So I'm gonna come down here, stay down this ravine. I'm gonna go up a little bit and go to the north, to base one without being spotted, hopefully. Uh, Dow shots would be from their base on the other side. So I'm going to land. Got to bring the nose up. 
lower altitude, slow com slowly come down, and then it'll take the base. Now, this is one of those bases that provides PT boats on this map, so that means that while they're here, if we drop supplies there, they'll actually generate PT boats, which will come out and uh, surf around basically the ocean and shoot at the enemy aircraft overhead. Now, uh, I'm going to try this. I'm going to go for the second base. It's really dangerous, but I'm going to try and get a low enough, I think I can do it, against our AA and land. And hopefully the soldiers can handle that, but let's... Ah, maybe not. Yeah, two commit... Nope. I'll take these out. Jeez. Okay, well, that's not going to work. Of course, he gets the point because he captured that base early in the match. So I'll go back to the Huey one more time. Now, usually in these matches, we'll have a lot more people popping in. In fact, there'll be more popping in shortly, I guarantee it. Usually happens. Oh, here we go. Oh, hello. Ooh, that was a close. My hydraulics? No, I lost control. Dang it, I can't turn. Jeez. Ah, and again, one of those little tiny Russian helicopters. And that carries like 10 people on board. I have no idea how they, they load them in there. This also gives me a chance to show you what the recon vehicles are like, like, at least on the American side. Recon vehicles are very light, but very fragile. Able to spot enemies. They're able to, they have a lot of uh, minigun ammunition, a few rockets they can defend themselves with. Uh, they are even one of the few that actually can call in mortar strikes. Now, how that works is somebody has to drop a mortar team down. It has to be a transport or an attack helicopter somewhere on the map. And then all I have to do is just target a, an opponent and uh, mortar shells will actually come flying in. It's actually kind of a nice little feature. Yeah, let's see. Because I'm agile, I can go right through here. Perfect. So let's see where he's at. And there he is. Hello. Trying to avoid their base AA. No, 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 you're not getting away like that. You're not getting away like that. I'm not, no. I know you have you have troops on board. You're not going to land. You're not going to land at that base. No, you're not. Here, take this. Take my rockets. Rockets away. May not be heat seeking, but they definitely do have a purpose. They have short range, but yeah, they definitely do have a purpose. Though exactly how in the world I'm flying right about now, I have no idea. Uh, oh well. Allies coming in to land at the base. Ah, here we go. Combat. No, 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 no. Combat. You don't have missiles anymore. Back, back, reverse, reverse. Pull back, pull back. Critical. What the? What is with the bananas? No. No, stop. Okay, well, he's gone. Good. Uh... Altitude, please. Altitude. Altitude. Jeez. <laughs> Wait, what? What is it with the bananas? I'm getting attacked by bananas now. What? Okay, well, he's gone. That helped. That helped a lot. I actually stopped recording uh, after a while there because considering how long this match is going, so I figured I would save you guys all that uh, hassle there. Usually the matches are about an hour or listed at that. They could be go a little. They're, they're, they can go the full hour. They can go less. Um, this has gone pretty good. Um, or what? Or, you know, basically almost to uh, 38 minutes, you know, we've, we've got left here. So, not bad. Uh, we're going to try and get this done with. We're getting close to winning. Come on. Take out that banana. Take out that yak. Nice. They got the yak. Uh huh. Yeah, that's not going to work. No, 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 no. Rockets, rockets, rockets. You little, these little helicopters, come on. It, no, whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> no, that's not going to happen, not right now. Uh, rockets. Ow. 
Got him. But he hit my rudder. I can't. I can't lift. Lift, 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 please lift. Lift. Get, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. Perfect. Hold it. If I can get to the base. If I can get to the base. They hit my rudder. I mean, they hit the rotors, sorry. Oh, no. Okay, land. Land without exploding, please. Uh, a little forward. Boom. The question is, do I really want to continue with the Huey? Or should I just rotate to something else? I mean, we're getting close to winning this match anyway. I think we only need to get, what, one more base at least. Uh, we'll have that, and then it'll be under uh, our control. So let's see what happens here. Oh, they did launch the PT boats. I was wondering where they were at. So evidently somebody got supplies out to that base. Oh, these PT boats, they're fragile, but they are a nuisance. Especially when you're not paying attention. And there's usually more than one wave of them. Da, 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 da. Come here. There's another one. And... They got it. So I'm gonna take out their AA here. So hopefully somebody's gonna be taking over that base very soon, so I'm gonna hold that. Maybe it's two bases. I don't know. Our points, the points are, are accumulating pretty fast. So he's got the base. Perfect. Now this is the time when the enemy team starts becoming desperate. I mean, they've got... they got three people on their side as well. So I'm going to go this way around. I'm going to go around this base, uh, number three. I'm going to go this way, loop around it, and go north, just in case anybody's trying to take this base or come down this way. And then we're going to meet up and try and take a base number five. Warning. Engine so it looks like he's going to try and land and take it. Looks like a landing pattern. Lower my altitude just slightly. Are you going to land? Are you going to take it? Okay, I guess I'm going to take it. Not in the position I want to be in right now. Not with taking this base and being attacked. And, of course, he's got problems because of the altitude. Too close to the uh, ocean. Got him. Nope. There we go. So now I've got issues. I'm very low. And it's going to take me forever to get back up. To get... Yeah. It's going to take me forever to get... Oh, he's gone. Okay, so it's going to take me forever to get altitude. I need to... Come on, defend, defend. You know what? I'm just going to try and take the base. Come on. pull, Push forward. Go forward. Move forward. Oh, come on. Nose down. Nose down. Nose down. There we go. We can do it, did, 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 no. Jeez. And, and. Did, did, did. Yes, I got one of the crew members out. We won. <laughs> now that's kind of like a Michael Bay thing going on right about there. Oh, that's what that's all about. Whew, that was a good match. So that was Heliborn. It's a game that is on Steam for PC. It is 1999 USD. It might be more or less where you're from and whatever currency you're using. But it's still a fun game. It does deal with a certain period of the time, which is from the end of World War II, Vietnam, all the way up to basically the modern era right now with helicopter combat. It has a nice idea behind it, and personally, I do like it. So I'm going to keep playing this for a while, and uh, if at some point I figure a way to get this to stream, I'll do that. So anyway, wherever you are, whatever you do, I hope you have a great day, a great afternoon, and I will see you very soon. This is Combat PT, signing off.